Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Cover to Cover. Um, today we're going to be reviewing part two of the Persepolis um, series. We didn't expect this, but we enjoyed Persepolis the first part so much that we decided to follow up with part two. We were all in agreement about that, and we were really excited to kind of follow up with uh, Marjan's uh, journey. So we're really excited to bring that to you. This is still a spoiler alert <laughs> because uh, we talk about every part of the book, the beginning, the middle, and the end. So this is your alert right now. Um, we all agreed to do this book, so we don't have to really talk about what inspired us to do it. I yeah. think that we're just like motivated. This is the consensus that yeah. we all enjoyed really, the first really nice. one. Yeah. We yeah. really enjoyed the first yeah. one. Yeah, so without yeah. further ado, let's get lit. Uh, what were the differences, guys, between this one and the first one, do you think? I, I mean, think she's a little bit older. Yeah, because yeah. you're, you're looking at the first one in a perspective of a child, whereas uh, at where the first one ends, where she's leaving Iran to go to Austria... Um, and then she's getting to Austria. Now you're seeing it as a teenager and then an, as an adult. In a well, I, I see that too. Is like, it, there's some symbolism in that, right? Yes. She's like departing. She's leaving yeah. her childhood. She's leaving yes. her family. She's embarking on yes. this yes. new yes. thing. And then all of a sudden this story now it picks up. Well, it definitely does. Cause if you remember from the first book, she, that's kind of like, uh, that's like when the bombing happened and her friend died, that's kind of like when she was signaling that like her childhood was was over, right. like it had been done. But she needed something to kind of recover from that, and I think yes. that symbolically and even like physically, she had gone to another place, and now she's yeah. exploring this whole other side of herself as well as this area. Yeah. Yes. Now you you have her in a situation where she's far away from her family, her parents, who obviously are like pretty much her best friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and now she's having to deal with all these things on her own. She realizes, hey, my parents are going through even worse things, so I don't even want to worry them. So she can mm -hmm. So in a sense, like. In the book, and while she's in Europe, she doesn't really have anyone that she can express her feelings and concerns to. Yeah, because she doesn't, she can't connect with anybody really there, and no. then she can't she's really tell them at very home. much an outsider. Yeah, and she can't connect with at home because she doesn't want to worry her parents that she's not doing as well as they want her to be doing. Yeah. I'm just glad that she already knew French. Like, that probably yes. helped her out yeah. a lot. She had already mm -hmm. learned French from where she was from. And I'm like, that's it's definitely something that is is not a thing in the United States where mm -hmm. we learn several languages unless we might actually have, like, our, our heritage, you know, calls mm -hmm. for that type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, do you speak any and other languages? I don't. Um, <laughs> I don't. Uh, but what's interesting is, you know, she, by the end of it, she she knows three languages. Right. Yeah. She learns German because she's in Austria. Yeah. Um, she's going to a French school. And of she course speaks she knows, Persian. Yeah, of course she speaks yeah. Persian. But that's actually a little bit of um, uh, like a battle, or not a battle, but like a, a one of her first obstacles when she first comes to Austria is that her and her roommate in this nunnery that she's living in um, <laughs> don't speak the same language. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's when she first kind of starts to feel like the outsider. She first starts, and it, she can't, you know, she can't help feel like the outsider. She looks like an outsider. Mm -hmm. You know, she she is very Iranian looking mm -hmm. and other people know it. They see it. It's very obvious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad she had that friend right from the start though because they got along yes. even with the language barrier and they started yeah. teaching each other their own languages and things yes. like that which was really neat. So. Yeah, and her her family kind of welcomed Marjane in a little bit when they went when she went to visit. Yep. Um, although that friendship was basically quickly, like yeah. a lot of this book, pretty much... Abrupt. As soon as she finds someone <laughs> to connect with, something causes yeah. it yeah. to end. But yeah. I think the, the nice part was that that was probably one of the most positive experiences she had while she was out there. Yes. Which was like, I, I right, could appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot better than some of her other living situations, yeah. obviously. Yes. Uh, she, she, I mean, I didn't even count how many places does she end up living in <laughs> by the time know. she leaves Austria. I mean, maybe four or five. And then she ends mm -hmm. up homeless. Yeah. yeah. And... Gosh, I never would have expected that nope. from the Marjane nope. of the first novel, yeah. you know, and especially, you know, she was so idealistic and she had so many passions and she was surrounded by love. But she was and... naive because she spent all her money on her boyfriend. Well, yes. the thing That's was, why she ended up homeless. Yeah. Like, I can't necessarily feel sorry for her because she got herself in that situation. And she knows I it. mean, but at the same time, she didn't know any better, you know, like... What do you mean? That was her she, first she, like love, you know. She was like, she looking didn't, for anything to connect. She, with yeah, she was looking point. for That's anyone right. to connect with. That was the only person that she could connect with. Mm -hmm. That she had connected with in that in that manner. Mm -hmm. I and just so, think she was able to connect the dots after the relationship was over. But come on, like she suddenly paying for everything. He lost his allowance. Yeah, but yes. you got to think about it realistically. Like how many people out there have gone through that experience? That's fair. Uh, yeah, and she, she, we have to remember too. She's the one writing this and drawing this, and so yeah. she paints a very 
clear picture of what an idiot she was. Yeah. Um, she does not deny it. She does not <laughs> deny it. I mean, I don't want, I don't want to call her an idiot. She's not an idiot. She's a yeah. very smart person, but yeah. in her circumstances, this is where she ended up. You yeah. know, she she yeah. essentially, you know, falls from one friendship to the next to the next without any real real connection. She wants stability yeah. and she, she wants, yes. it. And, yeah. And, and I mean, that's why I think that's why she allowed herself to be kind of taken advantage of and didn't really look at it because this person was was Marcus <laughs> was fulfilling, <laughs> yeah. was yes. fulfilling these these needs that she wanted at that time. So she was kind of like looking, wasn't really paying attention to what really was going on. Yes. And I think that to, to me, at least, I thought that that was kind of her rock bottom. So yes. like the fact that, you know, oh, she caught her boyfriend cheating on her. And now she's realized, now she had to like run away from where she was living. And now she's lit, you know, she was homeless for two months. I think uh, it was three. Or three months. Yeah, yeah. it's three months. Uh, and, you know, and then now she's like realized like all these mistakes she's made. And now she's kind of come full circle back because, you know, after that she goes to her, to her friend or to her family's friend that owes, to that owes money. yeah, that owes money to them. And then Good they're thing. like, hey, yeah. it worked out because they're like, hey, your parents have been looking for you for three months. Like, she might have needed that. Yeah. She needed, she needed something to bring her back. And I think the thing is, is I, I don't think she would have gone back to Austria if she hadn't hit rock bottom, even though she was so unhappy, so, so, so unhappy that she eventually ended up on the street. Um, it took that to remind her that she does have love somewhere and yeah, yeah. despite what's going on back home yeah. she decides to go back and so she goes she she returns back to austria but not or sorry to uh to iran, iran yeah. but not like the heroine in her own story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's that she comes back and she's she's defeated, she's defeated. <laughs> yeah she's defeated she she left with such great hopes to become someone yeah. in the western world and right. she comes back that essentially a homeless teen her mom but gave I, her that mission yeah you know, whatever you do just become somebody yeah be the best yeah. <laughs> you know i like that analogy when she her mom visits her and she's like i don't care if you're a dancer just be like the best dancer yeah. <laughs> yes like you're know, just talking about being a stripper <laughs> yes and i <laughs> mean know? essentially she doesn't fulfill any of that yeah but i i actually like the fact at like to me at least i could see that you know, her going, her going to Europe was a completely new thing for her. She was looking to immerse, uh, immerse herself into this different culture mm -hmm. and kind of in a sense, like forget about being her heritage, you know, like, mm -hmm. Hey, like they, she knows all these terrible things are happening in Iran and that people don't necessarily have the best perception of Iran at that time. Yes. And then, you know, she gets there, she realizes that it's not how she thought it was going to be. You know, even there's a point where he, she runs into that old man and he's telling her, get out, you know, a foreigner, get out of, get yeah. out of yeah. here. Yeah. You know, like, and, and she I, of course understands German, so she understands yeah. that this this random old man on a you know <laughs> a at a bus, was, like, was, right? yeah, yeah, a bus yeah, station a bus or a train a station train, yeah. is yelling these profanities at her. When but he has just, no idea I, why yeah. she's there, or yeah, or, yeah. yeah. But, but, but I think too that with that, it's uh, you know, like I think that some people can go through a. a, a a point in their lives where they kind of want to run away from where they came from. Mm -hmm. And she what was nice is that though. she changed yeah. her appearance. She did yes. everything. She got well, new friends throughout that whole part in Europe. Like you, you know, you talk, you, there's the point where she's at the, at the shop, at that little coffee shop and then those girls are talking crap about her right and then she's like you know i'm iranian and, and then she just like runs out and then i think from there she's starting to realize like she can't run away from her heritage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she can't run away from she that embraced like, she needs it. like she yes. needs that like that's part of her that's that's part of who she is yes so and, it, it was interesting when she got back home and there were things representative of the european cult culture on her walls and she started taking them down and covering yes. them up like the punk status and everything like yeah. that. Well, and even then, you know, she reconnects with her old friends right. from childhood and they're all made up like Western ladies. <laughs> to her yeah, yeah. eye, you know, they've got their hair permed and yeah. dramatic makeup on right. and they're very, yeah. you know, va va -voom. They were saying and that they would have gone to all the cl nightclubs and um, they would have totally immersed themselves in that type of culture and they don't and, understand and she, how she... And she feels so judgmental of them um, as they do of her. You know, they, they tell her, you you look like a nun you look like you know what have you done with the, you haven't done anything with yourself like you don't look western why you went to the west but right. you don't look western yeah. <laughs> um but she kind of reflecting on her judgment of them says that in their own way this was their way of rebelling yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, because ultimately that's that's all they could do. Because when she got back, you know, she came back to a war torn Tehran, yeah, mm -hmm. where the buildings were destroyed. You know, she's talking about how the streets, every other street was named after a, a martyr, martyr to try to like glorify all the all the terror that had happened for yeah. the last eight years. Yeah, yeah. and then hundred thousand people died. Yeah. yeah, well, I thought it was like. Five, they no, estimated between five hundred, yes. five hundred thousand to a million people. Oh yeah. gosh! Yeah, yes. oh, it was, it was, uh, it, was up it was insane. There. Yeah, yeah, it was a crazy, crazy amount. Be yeah, because they even talk about the uh, the mass uh, the mass execution of like the the prisoners that yes. were like, hey, we we'll, we'll forgive you and we'll let you go back uh, if, you, if you renounce what you're you know what you were rebelling against. Oh, it's crazy. And, and they yes. were talking about like most of them didn't. Most of them died because then, they would not do that. And then her her getting to talk to her childhood friend from her neighborhood. Yeah, the one in the um, that chair. that is yes, that is like one of the most I feel yeah. like dramatic scenes. It almost like gives me shivers now. Yeah. Is you know she's she's trying to think of who who does she want to see when she comes back to Tehran, mm -hmm. and um, you know she asks her parents, well, where is I can't remember his name right Kia, now. Yeah, Kia. Yeah, Kia. Where is Kia? And they said, well. You know, they he tried he he tried to leave, and they sent him to the front lines instead. They were and being like ambiguous. She's yeah. like, "Where is he?" And they was like, "Oh, well, he went there." And then she's like, "Okay, well, is he okay? Is he dead?" And they're like, "He's not dead, but he's not really. He's not okay. all himself." <laughs> and she goes and visits him, and he's missing an arm and a leg, and he's in a wheelchair. Yeah, and yeah. they're what, eighteen. Well, yeah, I, I think, think at like this point, 19, yeah, something yeah like they were probably there, approaching yeah. their 20s at this yeah. point. Yeah. Um, just crazy, crazy stuff for him to experience, especially for something that he did not even support. No. And mm -hmm. he was forced into. Yeah. yeah. So um, crazy, crazy stuff. And um, that's that's kind of just the overall feel but as I mean, I'm reading this book is just, you know, kind of shock and horror a yeah. little bit of, of what these people have had to deal with, which she had to deal with in Austria, mm -hmm. and then what, what her family and friends had to deal with back home. But it's just interesting to see how kind of full circle that whole situation and everything has kind of come back, like in the political climate that we're seeing right now with, you know, with all the bans and like, you know, with Iran kind of being in a situation where they're, you know, still looked as kind of a in a negative light. Yeah, you know. Guys, if you want to know the history of how this whole whole thing developed, like this is a great resource yeah. to look back. This is a, a first person account as to as to what happened, you know, in her own perspective, but she was very historically accurate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything that we're witnessing now is a result of the events that took place in what Marjan is talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at, at the very least when you're doing your research about these topics, even if they are political, which I encourage you to do, yeah. dig up information mm -hmm. and, and formulate your, your mm -hmm. own hypothesis based off of what you, mm -hmm. you've gathered yourself. I mean, because this is pretty much taking, this is talking pretty much since the fall of the Ottoman Empire, which was after World War I, yeah. which is like pretty much all the different regimes or like governments that were in place and then taken down and then somebody brought it in new yeah so it's just like all this like revolving door of government well we can yes. watch the news about the middle east and we're just kind of like almost comfortable with this we're mm -hmm. just so used to it right yeah. but like nobody asked the question of how did it even start where yes. where was the united states when this all happened and she kind of touches on that a little bit yeah yeah, yeah there's even a graphic well. in there it it that i was like that stood out to me where she's talking about uh, when they're gonna, supposed to go meet the anarchist, her and Marcus, right? Mm -hmm. Or I think it was her and Marcus, or some other. Or no, it was the boy that ended up being gay. And yeah, that came out to her. Yeah. Uh, and there's an image of her of like the anarchist blow, uh, burning the American flag. Right. And That's their idea of of anarchy. Uh, essentially, they view the United States in you know a, a very like non in a very negative way. Well, definitely. I mean, you're talking about they, they're looking at it as an like they're imperialists. You know, they're right. out there to conquer, and they're and and ultimately that's kind of what happened after world war one well they did like, mention the cia in the book as well oh yeah as, as having a hand and they there's no doubt that, that that the american government had influence over the events that took place now were they directly uh involved necessarily no but there was some influence in there and that's evident yeah. even in our own american history we can go back and look at our records and know that our government had a, a you know a hand in what was going on over there they yeah. influenced that region yeah and so. i mean like i said it's it's happened since world war one that that mm -hmm. whole that whole region was divided in purpose for dividing well, up resources. It's valuable, yeah. and essentially, if you can kind of separate them yeah. and make them hate each other, yeah. and and isn't that what the dad says over and over and over and over again? Is it's about the oil? It it's is. It's all about. It's not about liberating this group or liberating no. that group. It's about the oil. It's the control yeah. over the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And um, you know, it's it's a stark, sad reminder that you know, money. 
Money and resources yeah. is what matters. Right. Yeah. Um, Bottom line driven, it's always money. Mm-hmm. It's like always money. For a lot of people. For a lot of people. Yeah, for a lot of people. Not everyone. To, mm-hmm. I mean, I know you mentioned in the last time that we did the video for Persepolis Part 1 that your your father was directly influenced in his decision to leave that region and come to the U.S. Or well. How would you kind of describe that? He, he came to America because he... He wanted to be in America. He he felt he felt um, kind of divided living in Pakistan. He didn't yeah. feel. It, here's the thing: is he actually grew up a little bit like Marjane. His family was very very well off. Okay. He went to a very Western school, um, and you know the people who graduated from this school, they, you know, it was an English speaking school. Um, so he learned English from like practically childhood. He, nice. he grew up there, going to a boarding school. Um, and so it was kind of the natural progression that when he graduated, he would leave because unfortunately for, um, for country, for a lot of countries, the idea is that the really well off leave. Mm-hmm. A lot of countries do that. The Philippines, mm-hmm. I, my mom's Filipino, the Philippines does it. Pakistan, that happens. Yeah. You know, Iran. That's kind of their end. The the mother's end. The parents' end goal for Marjane is that she leaves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They don't want her to have to live under this oppressive, nope. you know, yeah. regime. They they <clears throat> educate her and they they teach her not to settle for what she has in Iran, mm-hmm. um, the oppressive regime that she has there. And and so, you know, I think that's that played a big part in why both my parents left their countries. Right. Um, Just essentially to, to make progress or to kind of better themselves. Yes, and, okay. you know, to add to that, too, um, they weren't as oppressive then as they are now. Mm-hmm. They, you know, during, especially when my dad left in, like, the 60s, 70s, mm-hmm. um, he talks of going to Iraq on vacation, you know, yeah. it, he talks of going to, uh, that's unimaginable at this point. Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah. You know, the, he used to go to Kabul and go to the nightclubs and <sighs> sit at cafes and smoke and talk, you know, it was, it was kind of a very Western, um, feel. And you get that in these two books. You yeah. really get that because when she's little, her parents have parties, mm. they, they're free. They're well, that drives a Cadillac. Exactly. Yeah. Your dad drives <laughs> about, which is funny because in the first book she talks about the Cadillac as like kind of being like shameful, like oh you know yeah. like we don't want to be seen in this flashy thing. Like we yeah. have we have some you know we have more than a lot of other people. It's do. like abundance. But then yes. when she comes back from Europe, she's like I kind of wish she would have picked me up in the Cadillac. Yeah, because well, she could appreciate the fact that they they have the resources to actually have something like that. Exactly. And then in the in the first book she talks about how, especially in those early days, they they protested. They you know they were active. They had ideals. Um, by the end of, by this book, by, especially by, by the time she comes back, her parents are essentially defeated. Yeah. Yeah. They just want to live their lives. They're defeated by war. They're defeated by this oppressive regime, regime, mm-hmm. you know, um, they don't feel safe to protest anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, it yeah. is a freedom to be able to protest, to be comfortable enough to be able to go out there and tell the government you don't like what's happening yeah. Yeah. is a freedom. And they lost that. Right. Yeah. Oh, and it definitely like made me appreciate our freedoms, you know, that yeah. we can sit here and talk about what's going on openly 100%. and, and, and yeah. feel like there's not going to be any terrible repercussions from the government that yeah. someone's going to come knock on my door and take me away because right. I, I'm opposing. And make yeah. us pay money yeah. or else we're going to get whipped or yeah. whatever exactly. for indecency yeah. and all of that. Well, and it was interesting too to see, so, I mean, I've heard in the news of, you know, politicized cartoons being very, very, very um, uh, illegal <laughs> <laughs> is probably the best word for it in a lot of these oppressive regimes and people get killed for for these things. I mean, I just read on the news recently that um, in Russia, Vladimir Putin, mm-hmm. um, uh, showing Vladimir Putin in makeup is a thing, apparently. Yeah, it was <laughs> a trend. It was a trend. <laughs> and it's illegal. You can you can be put in they, prison. They you have well, what's photo. interesting, it's, yeah. if you remember towards the end of the book, uh, he she has a friend from work yeah. who's a cartoonist. Well, and she's and a cartoonist. She, and yeah, she she's drew, an artist. And her friend drew... Um, 
was it the pre not the president prime minister i think at the time i don't remember but it because he wanted to do like a rapunzel type of uh cartoon right but you can't draw women <laughs> they couldn't draw women at the time yeah so she drew a man with a beard and it came off like oh they're homosexuals yeah. so now you've like spoken again you know you've spoken for homosexuality so then he's carted away for two weeks and beaten, come, beaten. Uh, yeah beaten <laughs> yes. <them>. yeah <laughs> um and other people have died for yeah. their political cartoons. Just from expressing themselves. And yeah. so, you know, her her avenue of um, expression is, is drawing like she does is a very, very, very uh, taboo way of expressing yourself if you don't agree with the, with the mainstream media. And so for her to become a cartoonist actually is even very interesting. Right. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. is awesome though, because you know, ultimately art is like one of the best ways to really mm -hmm. be able to express kind of that, you know, your, your different outlooks on things. And, and you probably, it's probably one of the safest ways to do it. Well, she was going to have boundaries and restrictions regardless. Yeah. When, when she yeah. and her husband had created that theme park, for example, and they were trying to present it to the government, it was like, we're only going to accept anything that's religious. Yeah. So, they well, just this wanted was... a bunch of pictures of martyrs and religious figures. Right. For a theme park. Mm -hmm. Which I think that kind of, it's, I think, I like the fact that you bring that up because that kind of brings her kind of full circle again because mm -hmm. now you're talking, you know, when, during this whole time you're talking about the fact that she was in a trouble, like her marriage was in trouble already, mm -hmm. like had been for years and then all of this happens and then, you know, she talks to her grandma about what's going on and she's like her grandma's pretty much encouraging her like hey yeah. get divorced like, and, I, mean, I got was, divorced it yeah. was basically the straw <laughs> like, that broke the it. camel's back and then and then yeah she finally realized you know she'd come full circle back to back home because she had not done well in austria but now here she is under this oppressive oppressive regime and she realizes as an adult that she she needs to leave yeah yeah and i think the way they ended the book I mean, what was your opinion on it? Because I, I have very great. strong opinions. I thought it was great. I think I think the fact that she... I like the fact when she was going around and kind of saying goodbye to everything. Yeah. And to me, it's a, it kind of made me think of like, oh, she's not coming back. She's yeah. not going to come back ever. And then she pretty much at the end of the book says like, hey... Um, she like, never, I, never she never, never saw back. her grandmother again. She saw her one more time. She saw her once and then that was it. Like one oh, more time yeah. after that. And, and what's so interesting is she ends the book that way. She yeah. says basically that, that freedom comes at a price. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that price is a connection to your homeland and your, and your mm -hmm. family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, overall, this was a really nice compliment to the first book. They were written so differently. The other one, you know, the first book was written in a childlike format, and then mm -hmm. this one was the more adult, it was darker. adolescent. It was dark. It was mm -hmm. very political. Mm -hmm. It was very, um, there was a lot of awareness to it. She mm -hmm. was now aware of her surroundings, aware of the discrimination that was used against her, mm -hmm. and aware of the judgment that, that she placed on herself as well as other people had placed on her as well. And, and just the personal journey, because yeah. I yes. think, like, she realized, like, I can't be tied down. I can't be, like, in a sense of, like, tradition. And I, I need to be a free person. And, like, and kind of, like, you know, with the whole marriage thing, I know her dad, you know, her dad was completely against it. Yeah. Because, you know, like, you know, sometimes they say your parents know you best. Mm -hmm. And he knew that. Well, he know? wanted her to figure it out for herself. Yeah, exactly. And which... that's the experience that they, they taught her the entire time was just experience it for yourself. Because if we tell you, you can't just take our word for it. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, that's probably the best piece of advice that this book provides to any reader is just try it out for yourself don't just take somebody's word for it make sure you have that experience i actually had a conversation with somebody recently and they said you can argue somebody's opinion you can't argue someone's experience mm -hmm. and that really really resonated with me and it also kind of uh, applied itself just in a very coincidental time to this book and what it was talking about so um yeah i i, I think a resounding thumbs up from all of us yeah, yeah. i'm gonna give yeah, it a thumbs, sure. up. Uh, thumbs up definitely check it out um that's our recommendation we really enjoyed it I think it was a nice uh, closure for the first part of it to kind of have that ending. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to look for stuff that she may have written in, uh, after this as well. Yeah. Just I thought she was a, it was really well done. Still in the same style, the comic book style. So if yeah. you appreciate that type of style, you'll really get into this book. A lot of dialogue. Um, you have the pictures that are kind of um, expressing all of the different um, memories that she's going through and experiences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you have any thoughts of your own, please share them with us. Um, we obviously had a lot to go off of, you know, regarding this, even though it was short. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have anything that you might agree with or disagree, or if you want us to expand on something, please let us know in the comments. Uh, we'd love to hear it um, because it really, it touched us in a way and we hope that it really does the same for you as well. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, the next time you see us, we're going to be talking about Into the Wild. So uh, we have Brian here who chose that book. Um, we'll be discussing that and how it kind of pertains to our lives. And uh, we're, I'm, I'm interested to see you know, what our thoughts are about that. So thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.